Hey guys, I was just putting out a few fall decorations on the front porch, taking down some of the summer stuff because the weather is certainly telling us that fall is near. I'm going to head to the garden and pull the rest of the cucumbers and the green beans and kind of take down those plants because I'm done with them for the year. And I thought I'd grab the camera quick and take you with so that the people that wanted to have a tour of our garden can see really quickly where we are, at least at the middle of August. I will be fully transparent. The garden is looking a little bit shabby because for us, we're nearing the end of our growing season. So even though we could, weather permitting, grow into October, I tend to pull our garden in September because we have so many other projects on our property to get to. One of them in particular is the tree seedlings. We just have to try to help them get ready for winter. So we need some time to do that before frost. Hey, Blue. We need to do we need some time to do that before the frost comes and even snow I hate even saying the word but before that gets here we have to deal with the little seedlings um, and a few other things so the garden gets wrapped up a little sooner than maybe most people in our area for us we're a zone four almost a zone three so it's pretty chilly here and I do some things in particular that help us maximize the short window um, that we have to grow. So I'm going to show that to you. But in this video, I'm just going to kind of keep it high level and, and show you just my layout, what I do um, in general. And then in the spring, I'll be happy to make another video and kind of walk you through how I handle my plants, what I start from seed, what I start indoors. Um, and there's a couple things that I actually go to the nursery and buy too, because for me, I'm just, it's not worth it to me to start them really early on and kind of baby them for a few months. I'll pay the couple bucks to go get them from the nursery that I like that's that's really not far from, from me and let them deal with babying them until I'm ready to put them in the ground. So I'll walk through that in the springtime, but today we're just going to walk over there and show kind of how I do it. One important thing to note for us is we do not use any herbicides, pesticides, insecticides. Basically, bottom line, we are completely natural and we use essentially the environment and wildlife and a kind of complete well-rounded ecosystem to manage our garden. So we don't have pests in the garden. We don't have wildlife eat our garden, even though you'll see that it's not fenced at all. And we have a lot of deer and rabbits and many other critters that kind of roam and, and call our property home too. But they don't bother our things. And the, the reason for that is how we live with them and we're not constantly you know fighting them or, or trying to get them to leave so we leave a lot of native plants our yard is you'd be hard pressed to find a blade of grass in our yard it's mostly white clover but we leave it there um, because that's the native plants that the wildlife likes to eat and if they have an abundance of food that they know is for them they don't tend to have to be so picky about what they eat and just kind of hunt for food which would be my lettuce so so we leave things open we're, we're not fenced we leave native plants for the wildlife they're happy to eat that for us and we're happy to leave it for them and in turn um, our pollinators and things that also eat the the pollen off of for example the clover that's in our yard um, they thank us by pollinating our garden too. So it's kind of a two-way street. We just try to live in harmony with everything that's that's natural. So from the tiniest little bug to the to the deer and the bunnies and to us, we just try to have we try to really create a food forest here for us and for them. And we help each other. So it's pretty interesting to see. Oh, there's a little hummingbird over my head. Um, but let's head to the garden and I'll kind of show you just what I do in general. My blue girl, she's totally with me right here. Hey boo. Hey honey girl. Do you want to go to the garden? Yeah, you love the garden, don't you? Let's go. girl okay so you can see like I said no fence at all completely accessible by really any animal that wants in but knock on wood 
we don't ever have a problem. Like nothing is in there except for maybe a snake that is <laughs> using the black mat that I use to kind of warm himself. But they are completely welcome because they keep any of the smaller critters like mice out of the garden and eating the kind of nibbling on the roots of our plants. So snakes are okay. Lots of pollinators visit the garden and we're happy to have them here too. So no fence. And if you saw our yard and can see kind of what I call the field over there, we leave it natural. It's full of wildflowers. Pollinators love it. The little critters love it. Lots of bunnies come and eat. The deer come and eat. It's just awesome to be able to live with them and not constantly trying to find ways to get rid of them or have them live somewhere else. So for me, the first thing I do is I use the kind of tarping system a lot of people call it. So this is actually just a billboard. This right here is just an old billboard sign that I bought offline for like I think 50 bucks. It's 20 by 60, 20 feet by 60 feet. And I use it for a couple of reasons. One, because we are zone four and we're really cold, I can put my plants in the ground a lot sooner because it heats up the ground um, earlier on and kind of catches that sun. And also it acts as a weed deterrent. I hate pulling weeds. I'm the laziest gardener probably in the world. And weeding or even rototilling, we have a rototiller, but that is just not, not something that I look forward to doing. So the black mat helps with that. Um, and I just cut little like four or five inch holes and plant in the same in the same holes every year. But I pull it up at the end of the year, we till it really good, we put it back down, put some some straw underneath it to kind of feed the soil, and then pull it up in the spring, till it again, put it back down, and then I don't deal, literally do not deal with weeds hardly ever. Maybe I pick one that's growing out of the tiny hole that I cut, but even so, as you can see in my dill, a lot of times I just leave it. There's a lot of grass growing in the dill, it's fine. It's not hurting anything. The next thing I do is I plant dill at the end of almost every row. Hey Blue, can you not eat the cucumbers, babe? Hey, <laughs> those are for Elmer, the last crops for Elmer. Please don't eat them. Um, <laughs> anyways, I plant dill at the end of all of my rows, almost all of the rows. For two reasons. One, I use dill for pickling, but two, it's kind of a smelly plant. So some of the little critters like bunnies aren't really fond of the smell of it and it's a little bit of a natural deterrent. So it works like some people use marigolds to plant at the end of their rows. If you look at this dill, it is essentially done for the season, which is fine. I leave it standing tall for two reasons. I let it go to seed for one, um, and collect it for next year so I can plant some more. And two, the pollinators love it. And by kind of encouraging the pollinators to come and hang out on the dill, they return the favor by pollinating the rest of the plants that I have in the garden. So win-win. On the end, I always put my tomatoes and my tomatoes will look really strange to you. They'll look almost naked. That's because last week I came through and I cut off almost all the foliage because I'm ready to make salsa. So when I trim back the foliage and I just leave the tomatoes themselves exposed, it tells the plant, hey, let's ripen these babies up. So it's working on that now and you can see I have a nice little crop right there of red tomatoes that I should come out and pick. And speaking of harvesting, here's our cucumbers. I'm gonna get one last, um, probably one last crop today, and then I'm gonna pull these plants up. I don't wanna really look at another cucumber. This year I've picked well over 20 gallons. I'll probably have, gosh, five, six more gallons in this crop right here. Then those plants are coming out. We're actually giving this last crop to um, a friend of ours because I've already canned way more pickles than we actually need. So cucumbers are here. And the way that we plant is a little bit in stages so that we can deal with what's ready to harvest um, in smaller quantities rather than dealing with the whole garden being ready to harvest at the same time. So in June, um, we pick lettuce and peas. You won't even see them in our garden anymore. Once we're done with them, we kind of pull up the plants and let something else take over. 
In July, we start to pick cucumbers and green beans, and we're even into August this year because the plants were doing wonderful, so I let them go a little bit longer than I normally do. But last crop on cucumbers, then these are gonna come up. And last crop on green beans here, and they're looking like they're ready to come up. Okay, then down here I have my pepper plants, and they will look probably very strange to most people. <laughs> they're short and kind of stocky and bushy, but that's because I use a trimming technique to keep them from getting tall and leggy and actually make them produce more fruit for one, but to be able to hold that fruit for two. If you've seen kind of tall leggy um, green uh, peppers, then, sorry, I got distracted by blue. If you've seen tall leggy green peppers, you have probably seen them almost tipping over or needing lots and lots of support and not many peppers on it. The technique that I use to prune these back really early on in the season just promotes so much growth. Like this tiny little guy, he's probably only maybe a foot tall, maybe, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just with a quick count. So that works out really well for me. In the spring, I'll show you kind of how I prune so that if you want to use the same technique and you're in a cold area, you can. Okay, over here is our squash, watermelon, and cantaloupe crop. This area that you're seeing it in is probably, gosh, 20 by 20. I only planted maybe eight plants over there and this year they are just taking over. So I have butternut squash, winter squash, just one cantaloupe plant in there and two or three watermelon. And we're gonna harvest those, I don't know, three, four weeks from now. They're kind of the last thing to go green peppers and my garden salsa peppers here they will look at all of these we will um pick these when we want to make salsa so that's going to be probably next weekend and then on the back side of our garden here which is not part of the 20 by 60 mat but it's probably another 15 feet by maybe 20 feet this is our carrots and our potatoes Potatoes I haven't touched for a couple of weeks. I'm kind of letting the foliage that's above ground die off and really tell me when they're ready to be harvested. They are almost ready now, so we'll probably pick them tomorrow um, and get them out of the ground this weekend. So potatoes are coming up soon. Carrots are one of the last things that we harvest as well, um, just because they kind of like it cold and they really mature when it gets a little colder in the season. If I pulled one now, it'd probably be the size of you know, a little bit bigger than a pencil. Okay, then the last thing I do is I plant sunflowers on the western side of our garden. So there's a couple of reasons behind that. One, it helps shade some of the smaller plants that are a little more susceptible to the heat. So afternoon sun, they definitely help with that. Number two, we um, dry the heads out in the fall and we feed the seeds to the birds in the winter time. And number three, it also attracts pollinators to the garden and in turn they pollinate all the other plants that I need a little help with. So that is my quick little garden tour and my lovely helper Blue who just eats all of the cucumbers. In a few weeks I'm going to be building a greenhouse kind of back over here so I'll probably make a video on that. So we are, we're DIYers and we're pretty cheap as well. So I'll try to make a video and share how we are going to build a, a small little greenhouse to help us get started in the spring with some of our um, plants that we just want to start inside. So that's it. Come on, pretty lady. Let's go inside. It's pretty hot out here. I'm going to put you inside and I'm going to pick the cucumbers and green beans.